Well, thanks for coming to the King's Road. You've been here before, haven't you? Yeah, I love coming here. It's very, it, pre- I mean, it's, it's like a, a dream way. office. Yeah, well, it's really a house, so... Um, oh, I know. But I li- I've been here 20 years. It's but, very um, personal to you. Yeah. Um, you know... It's all my rubbish all over the walls and everything. No, but I like it. And I remember the first time I came here um, to meet you because, um, you know, I love Grenson, but... Mm. Um, couldn't really see how I would fit in, but when I came and I saw those black, you know, I I, yeah. I saw those black and white shoes uh, mm. down there mm-hmm. that you told me you designed. Was it gold tw- jazz shoes? Yeah, gold jazz, old jazz, old shoes. jazz yeah. shoes. Yeah, and also even though your stuff is is um, has a different sort of obviously on the top you go Lulu Guinness and Grant's, you know. Yeah. But it's a sort of glamour, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. I love it when two slightly different things yeah. come together. But and... also, we both like the, the glamorous side yeah. as well as the Absolutely. Sort of we all need a bit of glamour side. in our lives. Yeah. Totally. Exactly. Now, um, one of the things I really wanted to talk to you about right at the beginning, um, because I've been through the same thing, is starting a business. <sighs> Yes. So before we get on to design and things like that, yeah. tell me about the very beginning for you and starting a business and what, what, what made you want your own business and how did you start and how scary was um, it? I think in those days we were very lucky. Uh, there wasn't so much competition by half. When I started mm. my own business, it was, um, it was sort of towards the end of the 80s, right at the end of the 80s, and it was everyone was doing it. We all had so much... Um, confidence and yeah, yeah. a lot of people my age my peers were starting them whether they were doing like uh, oh I don't know a little publishing business a little boot okay. bit you know they just were yeah. all, people were very confident we didn't have the internet so we mm. had it was incredibly difficult finding anything out mm. if it wasn't in the London yellow pages or yeah. whatever the you know or the library so or... for instance yeah yeah, so you had to go to exactly, mm. but you know, so for me, finding it about manufacturing in England for uh, anything, mm. you know, if it was out of, out of you know, yeah. So I would, I did end up going up north a lot actually. In the end, to Chester was where I found my manufacturer because I was doing leather briefcases. Then. What was it? But how did you? St- so what was your first thought? Did you wake up one morning? No, and no, think, no. I know what I want. Basically. To do. Um, it happened to me. It okay. kind of kept hitting me until almost, I mean, basically I came up with things and then there was a demand. I mean, I um, I was kind of a big vintage queen or I was young, so I was yeah. a princess. But yeah. So I always wore vintage clothes. So we were a little bit, so I suppose I'd been photographed a little bit. Um, yeah. And- Where were you living? You were living in I central London. I lived in London, London yeah. yeah. Um, I actually worked doing other things. You know, I had initially wanted to be an actress. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was then, and then I learned to do, you know, I had to get office jobs in the end. Yeah. And through my 20s, I had quite a lot of fun. Um, I'm afraid Mm. we all behaved (laughs) a lot worse then. Is that a euphemism, fun? For what? For doing outrageous things. Um, Just sort of putting your, going out was really important, you know. Uh, in my mid twen- mm. early 20s, I suppose. Mm. And, you know, it was the time of all the nightclubs with all the people then it was fun, wasn't went it? on and became the designers and the yeah. fashion, uh, the singers and things like that. But um, I had, and then I had an office job. I did, um, I learned to write PR, uh, uh, what do you call them, pitches and all that kind of oh, okay. thing, and the publishers. And I worked for various people, but everyone was always commented. I had individual style. I was kind of known yeah. in a sort of cult way for my look, I suppose yeah. it was. And um, handbag-wise, I always used to carry vintage bags, so nothing very interesting there, I guess. And then um, later on, um, so it was clothes I was really interested in. Yeah. But then um, I... I in that sort of 80s way when you know wanted to design a briefcase that you could fit all your items into anyway it was a concept yeah so I spent about a year on the side finding out about that and I ended up in Thailand and all sorts of places trying wow. to get something made wow. I mean it was really difficult was brave, though. I was bloody brave I mean yeah. I think there was one stage when I was 
on my way to a taxi in the outskirts of Bangkok, <laughs> which I, by myself, yeah. I did think, um, actually, what am, I doing? am I ever coming back? You know, because I was going around a sort of industrial estate somewhere. Yeah. And anyway, um, we all we were lucky, you know, we were all full of self-confidence. And I'd lived yeah. in Paris for three years with a fashion photographer. So I, I was sort of in the fashion business a little bit, but not an acting member. Yeah. But the initial idea, it was a bag. Was it it was a briefcase. Yeah. yeah, well, it was a briefcase because... Basically, I looked around and I thought, I don't want an office job. And I just mm. hate working in an office Monday to Friday. It's just, you know, I find it really difficult. Mm. What can I do so I don't have to, you know? Mm. And so, I mean, it's very, it's nearly 30 years ago now. So I, um, the biggest thing in England or the world at that stage, which is so old fashioned that most people, if they see this, won't even remember it, was the Filofax. Mm. Oh, yeah. And the Filofax was Apple. It yeah. was every computer. It yeah. was the, it was the laptop. It was the phone. It yeah. was. I don't know why we thought it was so interesting, but I've still got one here in a drawer I, somewhere. Yeah, you know, absolutely. But your Filofax was sort of. It was the most talked about everything. thing that ever happened. <laughs> we were so excited, weren't we? Oh, for at and least it was just two paper, years. Paper in a leather cover. That's but the all way it, was. it went. Anyway, and then you people started doing different Filofax. You know, all of this kind yeah. of thing. And um, I thought, okay, well, that's what's happening at the moment. Yes. Yeah. And that's a big wow. Yeah. So what am I going to do? Oh, I know. I'll do. And then I sort of came up with this concept, which now is what I do every day, you know, because mm. obviously my brain was already working it like that. Yeah. So on ideas, because mm. that's really what I am, an ideas person, I guess. Yeah. And... Um, I came up with this sort of briefcase. It was a sort of bigger... It was, And it was for women. And the whole point was women had only just moved into the workplace in the city. And it was all about power shoulder. Yeah. You know, it was a big women's thing. Yeah. And the whole kind of statement of it was that it was looked like brown leather from the outside. So you could work wherever you worked. Mm. Um, you know, and everyone wore black suits to work in those days. They didn't yeah, wear yeah. their home clothes. No, no, you know. no. No, it's a uniform. And then you opened it, and either had red or purple suede all over it oh, wow. as the in inside. And I know that you know it's like okay, big deal. But at the time, that have was you still a... got one? Oh yeah, um, yeah. And that what? was your so that was your first ever product. Yeah, and that and then I went and sold. You know, I w I went and met through a buyer I knew in America through a friend of mine. You know, you really had to. Yeah. It was like getting auditions or whatever, you know, you'd ring them and their assistant would say, I'm yeah. afraid she's out in the office, you know, yeah. i.e. not you again. Yeah, yeah. And in the end, in me I managed to get to meet through a girlfriend of mine that had gone to work for Bloomingdale's in America. You know, luckily mm. I got to meet a few buyers and... So what, do you remember your first account that you sold? Yeah, to? but it was on consignment, was as they call yeah, it. Yeah, on wheels. No, they I used to call it on wheels. Oh, on so, wheels. Yeah, so yeah. if it doesn't work, it's out. I was very lucky. Um, I was my I was Browns yeah. was my first. And oh, I was wow. allowed two in there on sale or return. I mean, I you know he. I, but great, what a start! So yeah. you were right at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. God, I was walking on air. Yeah, I bet um, you were. And my briefcase cost so much to make. I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't making a profit. It was just... What did it you know, retail for? Do you remember? For, I mean, then it yeah. retailed for £400, which right. is rather like saying 10000 now, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Because it was, in my naivety, it was the most complex piece of leather work mm. ever known to man. Yeah. It was a leather on the outside that had suede on the inside. And then on one side, it had eight pockets which were leather mm. but they then had transparent pockets so you could oh, see wow. every, yeah i mean it was so yeah. complicated but ignorance was mm. bliss you know mm. i didn't realize i was actually asking for the hardest thing you could possibly make to yeah. be made yeah and then the other side had a document thing that you unpoppered and took to your meeting the document holder anyway so actually it was the um mr bernstein it was the husband and he was very yeah. sweet and he took me for some coffee. On, I remember we were outdoors in Motcombe Street. And we sat at a sort of cafe table. Yeah. And, you know, they were just ni he, nice. Nice people. Yeah. And uh, did it sell? Do you remember? 
Uh, yeah, but the also, I well, yes, I, th I think I sold those couple. But meanwhile, mm. I went and saw um, Liberties. It went into Liberties on consignment, and it went into Joseph. Then I went to see the Harvey Nichols buyer. Um, and she just said to me, look, it's too expensive for us. I mean, by that time, they had a sort of young bit downstairs, which yeah. I was... I can't even remember what it was called now, but it was sort of the top shop or the whatever is, you know, of, of then. Yeah. What was it called downstairs at Harvey Nichols? It's like Harrods had the way in. The way in was on the top floor of Harrods. I can't remember the Harvey, Harvey Nichols, Nichols had their equivalent yeah. anyway. And also yeah. Harvey Nichols was the hottest place in town. It then. was the place to be, wasn't it? Yeah. Interestingly, it's yeah. all cyclical. Mm. And she said, um, you know, why don't you have bags more like you dress? Mm. And I was like, you know, this is a serious... She actually was probably started my business for I was going to say, what... Carol. I oh, ended really? up working with her for years on... Uh, and then she moved to Liberties. So that was quite interesting. Yeah. So then I sold it. And anyway, she just said to me, go away and come back with some less expensive... Because, I, th you know, young people are going to want to buy these, your stuff. Yeah. Um, and be like you, be colourful and be exuberant and yeah. all of that. So I went away and it was a very long story. I ended up making them actually with, I started with Cordway. I mean, I had to learn, like, mm. you know, we still do if you have your own business. Mm. You have to be a quick learner. Yeah. Because you literally learn as you're doing it. I mean, everything yeah. always kind of happened to me and then I sort of caught up yeah. and kept this, always try to look like I knew what I was yeah. doing. <laughs> well, you learn from your mistakes, don't you? Yeah, in the long run, yeah. I remember sitting of course in, you with do. Um, Barney's, and I I, oh. I went to see Barney's. It was my first meeting, and they asked me questions that are absolutely normal. Yeah, you normal didn't even questions. understand. I didn't even have, like, price lists, or yeah. they asked me for delivery times. I had no clue at all. Also, I, you know, you always sort of think American isn't a foreign language. Mm. Um but they used to say things like, um, so I'll take that in periwinkle. <laughs> What's that? It's a, a, a blue colour. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And or they'd say, and the first time I, the DTI, you know. And would you kind of write it down, pretend and nod as if yeah, you Yeah, and in the beginning, then you know, go and you'd Google be like, it. Google it. Oh, sorry, you couldn't Google that. Yeah. Please, go look down it up to the in library. a dictionary. Well, I might, I think I'd probably have my own dictionary. No, I would yeah. ask someone yeah. like my friend. But, you know, in those days, I was so sort of bespoke or, like, making as it happened. So mm. I'd have a um, a colour chart. So they'd go periwink, how about that? Mm, you know, and yeah. they'd take away... You had to... Oh, it was all... So, oh, so it was all made to order then? You were... You, they could choose the colours and you would make well, them Well, no, you don't need... And then you got wise to that. Yeah. You know, because you couldn't buy. You then learnt you had to buy the same colour scale. Especially I mean, if learned, it's on consignment. Yeah. So oh, no, no. After that, I never did consignment okay. again. Because yeah. I had to, like, realise. And as I was saying to earlier, you know, so I looked out and rather like the days of Instagram or so, I mean, in those days, I did realise. I'd lived abroad all my, you know, I was a global child. Mm. Um, so I wasn't just, like, thinking England's the best or England's... Actually, everyone thought England mm. was dreadful at the time and all wanted yeah. to live somewhere else. <laughs> um, the fashion, you know, we didn't have our sort of... Yeah. creative self-respect that we have now everyone no. was always in new york or um, paris or paris or new yeah. york you know yeah. or milan anywhere yeah yeah and now it's for ages it's been the coolest place to be but um yeah. at that stage it was different um but you know you just learned as you went along and how did it at what point did you feel this is really working and it was really starting to i don't take think off? you ever feel that is it just a kind of gradual thing there wasn't a day that you you saw one of your products in the high street in the street or oh, you saw an article enough, or a... funny enough when i thought i was a real designer well obviously being in the mu i was my first quite soon on the first bag i did on a very very which shows how whimsical we all were and unpragmatic mm. um i decided that i really missed <laughs> I love flowers and I really missed having flowers in the winter. 
yeah. like roses. I, I love roses and I miss yeah. them. So I wanted to put roses on the top of a handbag, you know, so that you could always keep the, have them. Mm. So I made this rose basket and it was obviously, it was the zeitgeist, isn't it? It's the right thing in the right time in the right place. Yeah. Because the next thing I knew, um, I had, I, you know, I was allowed to put some things in someone else's shop in Elizabeth Street. Oh, right. Um, and I had a couple of these rose baskets. I mean, they were mm. one, they were made individually. They were more, the way they were made was more like making a hat, really, because they were satin and flowers. And mm. everything was made by Cordwainer's people. Was it? That's what I was going to say to you earlier. Oh, yeah. really? So my first makers, in fact, all my makers always, for years and years, mm. um, were... Yeah, I used to drive all the stuff to the Over place, to Hackney, yeah. to Hackney and yeah. then later on, um, you know, I used to drive to Wembley. I mean, you know, I did everything and I always, I really did. I did every job. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. That is to do in, in my company. So what's your, um, I'm interested in your design process. So everybody designs <laughs> in a different way. I remember reading recently that um, Paul Smith saying that he designs in words. He never draws anything. But he'll say to a designer, I've got this idea for um, a jacket with extra wide lapels. and with a bit. So he'll design in words and that's the way he does it. They'll draw something up and then he'll say, no, more like this or mm. more like that. How, what's your process? Um, it's changed, you know, because it goes from the beginning. And I think I'm sort of going back to the beginning. I think it's cyclical. He has such a big business. So you start off, you know, you draw, you make it out of paper. I mean, I never went to Cordwainers or any kind of art school more than I did a bit of graphics at Cape Town when I was young. But, you know, so you literally made or you found a postcard. You know, we didn't mm. have all the aids we have but you literally made it first so, and and also you didn't have factories or you were at the place and you gave it there and you go oh I want the curve a bit you know it was mm. that mm. so I sort of learned that and you know rather like Kath Kitson always said you know her training ground was Blue Peter because mm. right. you know yeah yeah I learned you to cut out bits you know do you know yeah. what I mean literally Sticky measuring yeah and loo rolls and mm. all of that. And I did actually make, um, you know, cylinders, cardboard made... cylinders. <laughs> I mean, I had a bag that was a dog years ago, which was mm. why I got into Neiman Marcus, actually, okay. in Paris. But And it was a cylinder. Mm. And then it had, chen it was looked like a lap dog, but, you know, it was a cylinder of cardboard, how I originally made it. And then it had chenille wrapped around it. Because oh, wow. we all wore those chenille scarves yeah. at the time. Yeah. And I wrapped one around. You know, and then I tied it where the tail was. And then I cut mm. something off another bag for the face and tied it. I mean, you know, so I've gone from sort of literally making it. Yeah. And then the complication was getting someone to make it again. Mm. Yeah. Which, which the, they'll look at it and say, well, that can't be done. Immediately, if it's yeah. anything like the shoe business, yeah. anything you do that's different and new, they'll they always, immediately say, "Oh God, that's no. really difficult." That's it's rather hard. like, yeah, it's rather you feel it's that same response you get from, um, you know, if you're an architect or you're, a, you know, you're yeah. talking to a builder or anything, you know, you, and you know, if you say anything that isn't absolutely what they've done for. Mm. 18 yeah. years like yeah. painting a ceiling a color or something <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. yeah it's this is like, like that little early resistance oh that my god breakthrough you don't know well i still deal with that on a daily basis because yeah. i have a purse i try yeah. and work with perspex i try and work with all of these things and i probably am not a hand you know i'm i'm just one of those people i'm a sort of untrained artist mm. really mm. Um, but what i really like is decorative arts mm. i have no um aspersions to mm. anything else and you know I love applique so my love of sort of applique and embroidery and putting flowers on things and everything was when I was really you know it all coincided to be one like that's what people wanted mm. and I was an evening bag maker actually I mean mm. I made my name in America very much for evening bags yeah yeah you know because I'd had the flower basket I guess people looked to mm. me for that sure. But I just learned on the job, yeah. So, you know, the American buyers is an interesting one, mm. you know. Um, and uh, I, I went through the usual cycle of all of that, you know. And tell me about the um, the lips, because on the shoes that we've made, how did that 
first come about? Well, when did it come about? Because it's, it's a trademark. I think it's here, isn't it? ten years ago now. Okay. Um, about so ten years. Fairly recently, in the in terms yeah, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. life on the brand. Yeah, mm. but I always when you're asking about my early days, the one thing I did um, because it suited me actually. Well, you know, in the mm. end, and also I lived in Paris for three years, from seventeen to twenty. And I think there you learn very much this thing, whereas in in the English style at the time was punk. So if something is how you look, you all do that, whether it suits you or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you shave it, you do the whatever, you wear fishnet (laughs) tights and a mini skirt up to here. Yeah. Even if that probably isn't the most flattering thing for you. Mm. Um, It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Whereas the French thing was, was kind of, you know... Uh, which no one actually told me, but I guess you just... It, I always say I sort of got my training by osmosis from mm. living in, you know, just sort of yeah. sponge-like, really. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I knew that red lipstick suited me. Whenever I put it on, I don't know if I've got how much I've got on at the moment, but if I did yeah. that, it was sort of as if I came to life. It was like... Mm. You know, like asleep me, and then okay, I'm on. Like, and people say, "Oh my god, that really suits you." And so, in the end, that sort of sinks in. So, had you been wearing red lipstick for a long time? Yeah. Okay. So, to become my trademark, oh, I see. All, all through the the eighties and everything, when I, and it wasn't sort of people. It was quite out there at the time. You know, mm. people like natural things yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, if you wore red lipstick, you were a part of a tribe. I mean, still, I'm part of the tribe that wears red lipstick. Mm. We mm. know who we are, you know. Mm. And um, so the red lips was my signature, and I'd sort mm. of talked about it in, in, for ages. My first one was snakeskin, actually. Um, oh, really? Uh, on a bag. Yeah, I mean, it was a soft bag. If you see what I yeah. mean, it was a, it was a, mm. uh, had pillow lips. You know, oh, right. now it, yeah, the one that people think of is the Perspex one, I think. Yeah, but yeah. it was made in leather originally, and yeah, so red lips was my trademark. So we made a red lips bag. And did people ask for it? Things with you do have this thing with buyers where <laughs> they always gonna... want lips on it. Can we have some lips on it? <laughs> What do you mean, do you? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know, it was interesting because in the beginning, um, I was used to doing different things every season. I thought it mm. was a cop-out. Because mm. this was before everyone was like brand conscious. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't, you know, what's a brand? You know, oh, his coffee bra- had, had a yeah. brand or something. Yeah. But you know, like that you repeated the same thing and all that sort of thing that now mm. people do. I thought as a designer, it was a real cop-out to do anything the same two seasons running. I mean, I didn't have new ideas. Mm. That all sounds so funny now, to mm. hearing that. Yeah, it but, sounds exhausting as well, because do, reinventing everything every single season. But that's how I yeah. was made. Yeah. And I still am, actually. You know, it's just But having something that's a signature, is yeah, that a nice comfort as well, so, isn't it, well, as a designer, I've don't you think? Well, you relax. Well, you get... In bit. and out, I think yeah. I'm never. I, you know, I'm never the same about anything for two days running. One day mm. I'll hate it, and the mm. next day, <laughs> for some reason, I'll see something that'll make me like it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but the lips are basically yes, they're my trademark. I don't own them, but mm. they're my trademark. And um, how they're done on these shoes makes me love them today. Yeah, you tell know what about, I mean. Well, t- tell us about the shoes I don't, then. Well, uh, the the first thing is that you're, I would guess, you're known more for wearing heels than, yeah, than I'm, black shoes, I'm the so. original high heel girl. Mm. Um, my best high heel story is that um, I own because I'm five foot. I say I'm five foot two. I'm like five foot one and a half, <laughs> and I was always very conscious. You know, I always wanted to be taller. I think a lot of it was because for my first the three years I lived in Paris. All the girls I knew were models. Yeah. Um, because always I live with those. a photographer. And I think, you know, so if you're always around five foot 11 girls, you, mm. anyway, um, I didn't learn to love being small at mm. that set, yeah, yeah. 20. So I w- always wore the highest heels that were possible to wear mm. um, for years and years and years. And to the point that I didn't have flat shoes, you know, I really didn't, because trainers didn't exist then either. No. I mean, if you wore. No one wore trainers. No, except for sport, I guess. I mean, there might be a pair of tennis shoes yeah. or football. Green flash. Runners. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I mean, they weren't, they were like, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> and you could wear flat shoes, but I mean, you wouldn't. You just wouldn't. 
as and a woman. And are you converted now, though? Um, or not? Not fully? Have we got you 100% yet or not? Actually, um, so basically I bought my first pair of Grensons because I fell in love with them. I saw them, didn't I? And I fell in love with them and I liked the... Clara, I think the it Clara, was. Clara, and yeah. I fell in love with the... Um, what are they called? The tassels. tassels, yeah. There's a kilty on, and t- it's got everything on it, basically. Love that. You can that. have on a shoe. Well, yeah, so I like everything on everything, obviously, maximalist. Yeah. yeah. So um, I fell in love with them, and I got used to wearing them. And I have to say, the truth is, um, though I do my own shoes now, and I do wear high heel. I wear wedges mm. to parties, and th- you know, when I yeah. have to be a bit taller. Yeah. But I bought those, and that was last winter. So I wore them the whole of last winter. And now I'm addicted to them and I find it really hard putting any mm. other shoes on. Mm. But meanwhile, we were creating these. Yeah, these lovely things. Yeah. Um, and yes, I really do find putting any other shoes on <laughs> quite yeah. a problem. Um, I'm not just saying that. Are they, and are you pleased with them? I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm thrilled because they're so good, so different. I'm don't so you think? pleased. They're so unique. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I and I think them. simplicity is all, and I think we really did collaborate mm. in that way that, yeah. you know... Um, I think, because for us, collaborations are all about, not just about two people coming together and sharing logos on a thing, but actually bringing... Yeah, but I also, you know, I did bow to your shoe knot. I mean, like, for, for me, what was interesting um, about the process, because I love the way the lip is the... Yeah. What's this called? I never remember. Well, this this is like what we'd call the strap on a. But what's on a, this bit called? The um, the Flat. tongue, I guess. The tongue. Yeah. yeah. It's not really a tongue on a loafer, but I know what you mean. It's, but you know yeah. what I mean. The bit that comes up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. That's um, it. It's the bit that comes yeah. up. Yeah. Um, but I love that that merges into being, and I like the fact they're patent. Yeah. I love the way they're so well. You know, yeah. edge paint. You know, yeah. they're, they're made in England, made in a, a factory Look, that's been going for 150 one years. One of the reasons <laughs> I wanted to work with you is because they're made in England, yeah. um, and I think that is so unique. I don't. I think it's about the only thing I do make this season. You know, I went mm. from 80 percent of my stuff being made in England to mm. it not. Yeah. And anyone that um, makes shoes in a British factory, oh, I mean. It's just fabulous. And I still mm. haven't been up there, which I'd love to do. Well, you must come and have a look. Um, but it's not the, the idea that you can make it. absolutely a... immaculate. I'm really yeah. proud of them because they're, they're, really they're, sweet, they're a they? proper pair of shoes. Yeah. And as I say, they... Oh, can you hear them squeaking? Yeah. I've, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been wearing them, my pair. I can, I'm not going to bring my leg up here. No, no. They're basically like this. But with a few wearing, creases in the front. I've been wearing my pair for a bit and I've never had so many compliments about Great. something, really. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. That was um, that was really interesting. Really enjoyed Good. it. Good. Well, you got a little bit. Had. That was brilliant. Great. Cool. Is that okay? You happy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>